So now we want to apply everything that we've learned to an application question. So when observations began at t equals 0, a cancerous cell culture had 1,200 cells and continued to grow according to the function p of t equals 1,200 e to the t, where p is the number of cells and t is measured in days. So we have four parts right here. I've added in a part d, so you want to add that in if it's not in your notes. So we begin with part A. We want to compute P prime of T, and what are the units associated with that derivative? What does it measure, and why would this be important for researchers to know? All right, so P prime of T is dP dt, where P is our function, T is our independent variable. In other words, it's the derivative with respect to T of our function, 1200 e to the T. Now you don't have to write all this notation all the time. You do have to put one of these three, but one of them has to be in there. But of course the derivative of a constant times a function is just the constant times the derivative of the function. And the derivative of the function is itself because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this actually is the derivative. This is p prime of t. All right. Now what are its units? Well, this is where Leibniz notation actually comes in very handy. So if you think about p, p is the number of cells, and t is the number of days. So the prime notation, the Bernoulli notation, may seem like it's nicer, but it doesn't actually give you any sense of what the units are. But if you use the Leibniz notation, dp over dt, you can see that the derivative would have number of cells divided by number of days. In other words, the units are cells per day. Okay, so what does that mean for p prime of t? That means that p prime of t, oh, and this is the unit right here. Let's label it units. All right, so p prime of t um, tells researchers the velocity at which the cancer is growing, the rate of, um, oops, sorry, the rate at which the cancer is growing. This is a, in a culture, so cancer cell culture is growing. I know it's growing because it's exponential growth. Um, 1200 e to the t is exponential growth. Speaking of which, on the interval 0 to 4, when is p prime of t the greatest and when is the least? All right, so I have a graph for p prime of, oh, well, actually for p of t, which is also p prime of t. They're one and the same. So let me draw that graph. And of course, I would give it scale, so that way we have just a sense of what we're looking at. So over here is 0, over here is 4, and then 20,000, 40,000, 60,000. So this is 60,000 up here. And I start down way low, and I end up kind of close to 60,000 by the time I've reached 4. And there we go. So this is what it looks like from 0 to 4. All right, so when is the derivative the lowest? Oh, I better graph this. This is p prime of t. So it's actually its its own derivative. So um, it's actually p of t as well. But so p prime of t, just make that a little thicker for us to see. Oh, I don't like that. Hold on, I'm going to put it back to regular mode. <laughs> OK, so p prime of t. So when is the derivative the smallest? Well, the least is over here on the left, right? So where it's the lowest. And then where it's greatest is over here on the right. So this is p of t, but let me just graph um, p prime of t for that section there. So you can really quickly see that p of t is the black curve right there, but the derivative, and I'm only graphing the derivative from 0 to 4, which technically I only needed to look at that for the function itself as well. But you can see it's that red portion right there. That's the derivative. And so the derivative is smallest over on the left, and it's greatest over on the right. So and I'm going to write that up on our notes. All right, so over here, p prime of t is least close to, 
oh, they want the least. On the interval, when is it the least? Okay, so they want at. So p prime of t is the least right here, right? Least at t equals 0, or very close to it, right? Right, it's the smallest. And then p prime of t is greatest right up here, right? at t equals 4. All right, so I'm going to erase this extra bit. So it's it's low through all of that, but the least least would actually be at 0 itself. Sorry. Okay. So it's least over here, greatest over here. <sighs> okay. So now for letter C, does the curve of p prime of t ever have a horizontal tangent line? All right, so to have a horizontal tangent line, that would mean that the derivative is zero. In other words, um, well, we would have a flat spot right here, which never happens, right? So we never have a, so the answer is no. So let me, let me write down C, so no, right? To have a horizontal tangent line, does the curve of, I think this meant to be p of t. I think that's a typo. So it doesn't really matter because they're the same function, but let me just fix that. So does the curve of p of t ever have a horizontal tangent line? So no, p of t is never um, has a horizontal tangent line because p prime of t never is zero. So p prime of t equals 1200 e to the t um, is never zero. So there's no horizontal tangent line because p prime of t never touches the x-axis. Or the, in our case, the t-axis, sorry. All right, so this is the graphical way to see it. So this is graphical, right here. Oop, graphical, lost my, uh, my p, p, p and h in there. So graphical. So the horizontal, it never touches. So p prime of t never touches the t-axis, so we never have a zero. Now algebraically, you can see it right here. If you try to solve this, you won't have a solution. So you divide both sides by um, zero. Here, let me, let me set it equal to zero, and then you can see. So if I set this equal to zero, I would divide both sides by 1,200, we get e to the t equals 0 because 0 divided by 1200 is 0. So then to get t out of the exponent, if you remember from algebra class, we take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so I would take the natural log and the natural log of both sides. And the power rule for logarithm says I bring the t down in front. So it becomes t times the natural log of e, which is 1, equals the natural log of 0, ah, but the natural log of 0 is not possible. That does not exist. Right, we can never take the log of a 0 or nor a negative. So one way or another, we know that this is not possible. The graph of p of t never has a horizontal tangent line because this derivative never intersects the x-axis. It gets close to it at t equals 0, but it's not there. And that's because we can never take the log of zero. So graphically, we never the, the derivative never touches the x-axis. Algebraically, the derivative is never zero. Right? A horizontal tangent line would mean the derivative is zero, and that never happens. All right. What about letter D, the one that I kind of threw in there? So let me let me add this one in over here. So D, will it when will it reach fifty thousand? Okay, so graphically we can see 50,000 would be, um, let me just grab a color, right here. 50,000 comes through, through like that. That's 50,000. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen after 3 and before 4, somewhere in there. So at least that's my guess. I can find it with decimals really quickly, and I will in a second. But let's do it algebraically, because I wouldn't want you to avoid your algebra. All right, so algebraically, let's see here. 
I want 1,200 e to the t to be equal to 50,000. Divide both sides by 1,200. You get e to the t equals, uh, this is 41.6 repeating if you use a calculator. Then I want to take the natural log of both sides, just like I was trying to do on the other side and then that would bring the t down in front. So it becomes t times the natural log of e equals the natural log. It's technically of 50,000 over 1,200, or if you want to write it as natural log of 41.666 repeating. That'll be fine. Either one. <sighs> Okay, well the natural log of e by definition is 1. Right? This is just the number 1. So that's t times 1, which is t. So if I just grab a calculator and tell it to find the natural log of 50,000 over 1,200, and it'll do it for me. As a matter of fact, I can even do it in Desmos. So here, if I just click down here and I say type natural log, parentheses, 50,000 divided by 1,200. There we go, 3.7297. If I click on this y equals 50,000 over here, I can also find the intersection right there and see it's the same thing, 3.73. There we go, I had it, there it is. So Desmos is nice because you can just click on the intersection. If you're on a calculator, you have to use the intersect feature. All right, so that's our answer. T is about 3.73. This would be one case where rounding would be appropriate. And of course, we would give it units and its days. Because we're in a math class, so in a story problem like this, wherever appropriate, we will use units. So, and if we want to show it graphically, this is the algebraic method. Graphically, we have the graph right here. We would just label the point 3.73, 50,000. And there you go. That's the answer to part D.